Hello. Today we're going to go over PFP4, which is your personal cash flow statement. We're just going to walk through this step by step so you can get a better idea how to do this assignment before you submit it. As always, I go through everyone's assignment and if you don't get full credit for you, I'll tell you what you need to do and then you can make those corrections and then submit it again in order to get full credit. So when you download the file in Canvas and open it up, it should look like this, PFP4. Like with all the other ones, the yellow cells are what you need to fill in. So we'll say Eric Guess. We'll say 1st of January, 2022, month ending. Now, what we're going to do is look at a one month period. Now, this is hard. Things are variable. I know I do this myself. I use a slightly different spreadsheet but I do this myself and I know how hard it is. We're gonna, in some later videos, we're gonna go over different tools and techniques we can use to try and get a better handle on our expenses. I've been doing volunteer financial counseling for like 10 years now, and pretty much everyone's problem is that they overspend. Most people don't save and they overspend, which are kind of like two sides of the same coin. So anyway, we're gonna say December, 2021, right? So the easy part, your salary. And I'd like to get, make things more specific. So let's say I work at, I always go to Coffee Bean. Let's say I go to Coffee Bean and let's say my salary is $2,500 a month. Now, what I generally do, there's nothing in here for taxes. So I try to make it take home pay. So let's say my actual take-home pay is $2,250. Other income, I don't know. Let's say you drive for Lyft or something like that, and your take-home is $900. Again, just making these numbers up. As always, you fill in the yellow cells, and then it totals down here in the gray. So you can see this $2,250 plus $900 gives us $3,150. Unfortunately for most of us, we usually have one or two income sources here. So now we get to the tricky part, expenses. Well, what's my rent? Let's say I'm paying 850 a month. I'm renting a room with my brother. Loan payments, other videos talk about this. We did it when we talked about our um, the PFP1, our personal balance sheet, where we uh, listed all of our loans. And then I have another video that talks about finding out how much debt you have. So maybe you want to do something like this and say, yeah, maybe you want to list each one like Amex or Visa. Okay. This is 175 bucks a month. This is 75. Now, you know, the whole purpose of, of these courses is to get you to not have a lot of credit card debt. Credit card debt is usually non-productive debt. The money you spend on a credit card rarely goes to buy something that allows you to pay off that debt. Usually we're shopping, we're buying clothing, we're buying food, things like that on our credit cards. That is not stuff we should be running a credit card balance for. So hopefully you're paying off, if you have a credit card, hopefully you're paying it off in full every month. Remember, if not, you're borrowing money. But let's put the payments in here. Now, let's say you have some sort of, um, now here I was thinking of life insurance. We could be a bit more specific and say life insurance. If you have some, maybe that's $25 a month, right? These are fixed. That's not going to change. What? Also, we can do, depending on your situation, you might say um, health insurance. This, unfortunately, for many of us, is going to be very high. So there we go. We sum all of those. These are what we call fixed expenses. These aren't going to change from month to month. Here, hopefully, you can whittle this down and get rid of this, but we'll talk about that later. You might have a car payment. Let's chuck that in there. Um, Maybe you lease or buy your car. We'll call that 175 bucks as well. Um, again, any other fixed payment that doesn't change every month. 
So here we have 1,400. Again, I'm just making these numbers up. Food, do we eat? Well, probably. So what are we gonna put in here? 500, clothing, 50. I'm just throwing numbers in there. Your electric bill, your mobile phone bill. Maybe you don't pay water where you are. What kind of transportation? Now you can break it down. You can break it down into like uh, gasoline. Is there public transport? Do you take the train somewhere, et cetera? Personal care. Uh, I like to get massages. So I go, oh, okay, you need 50 times three massages a month. There you go. Uh, medical expenses. Now, presumably you have your monthly healthcare insurance costs, but you're going to have some other costs. Let's call it $50 for maybe a prescription or co-pays or things like that. Recreation entertainment. Again, you can break this down if it's stuff that you do regularly. I'm trying to think um, I surf, so I have a, a pass for the state parks. I break that out. It's 200 bucks a year, and I just go 200 divided by 12. So that's $17 plus, you know, whatever. I don't know. We'll put $50 a month for that kind of stuff. Um, eating out is another thing I would do. I don't buy people gifts. I don't like people. Um, they don't like me. Maybe because I don't buy them gifts. Who knows? So we'll put eating out restaurants, we'll say 250. The bulk of people I know who are young, and I talk about this when we have live classes, but most of the people I know who are young spend way more on eating out than I did. Uh, my generation, you know, I'm mid 40s, <clears throat> late 40s, uh, whatever. Um, you know, when I was 19 years old, I didn't have any money. And so, you know, we would eat, you know, a burrito based on how much money we had. Now people who are, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old go out for sushi and, you know, go to these fancy places and stuff. We could never do that. We never had the money for that. Interestingly, many of the people who do it now don't have the money for it, hence this. But that's the subject of another lecture. Uh, if you do any donations, just put other stuff in there. And it's, um, it's interesting to try and track this. I've been doing this now for myself for about six months, and it's kind of interesting. These are what we call variable outflows. Now, obviously, you're going to have to spend money on food, but how much really depends. So let's say here we have 1150. So your total outflows are 2575. Income is 3150. Your surplus, hopefully you have a surplus, is 575. Now, what I always get people to do is, you know, try to have savings. And those of us who live through COVID, which is pretty much everyone watching this video, realize that, hey, having money saved can be very useful, right? I don't think anyone expected the global economy to shut down for several months. And many people did not plan for that. They didn't plan for anything like that. So please start allocating money right away to savings. And then what you can do is once you've got enough money saved, I usually try to have three to six, or I recommend three to six months of expenses. So, you know, three to six times this number. And assuming if you lose your job or, you know, something like that, you can cut some of these, but this stuff is not as easily altered, right? You can't just move out of your place at a moment's notice generally. Sometimes you've got a, a lease that you have to honor, right? So you figure these are fixed, this stuff you can cut based on a really bad situation. But if you have three, four, maybe six months of total outflows saved, that's going to enable you some breathing room. I mean, we got lucky in COVID, they upped the uh, unemployment benefits, but don't expect that to always be available. Because uh, it might be some, maybe just you lose your job, right? The government's not gonna go out and pass legislation to, to increase just your unemployment. So then what you can do is say, okay, well, of this, I wanna divert you know, 400 of it to my emergency fund. Here, I'd probably go 500, and then just start putting money into an investment fund. Right? And we'll talk about that in other videos and in class, how that goes. And that will help you um, achieve your financial, goal, financial goals and have more security financially. So this is just a quick run through of PFP4. And um, it, look, don't, don't stress. It'll take a couple months to kind of dial this in and find out what you're spending. And I'm a big fan of um, using... 
um, a debit card to keep track of these things. And then what I do is try to set certain things up on auto pay and then use cash for the rest. And then I can take out a certain amount of cash every week or every month. And that's all I have to spend. And if I have $40 left and there's two days, well, that means I don't go and buy a Starbucks. So hopefully this is um, useful and please feel free to uh, drop a note in the comments and let me know what you think of this. Thank you.